Are we ready to move on to the LA Clippers? I think so. Please tell me about their, uh, their breakdown. Uh, so key free agents, maybe Aaron Gordon. He has a 20.9 million non-guaranteed salary. Uh, it guarantees on June 28th. We have to have a discussion about him, about whether it makes sense to guarantee him and use him as a trade chip, maybe. Then Mason Plumley and Russell Westbrook, who is non, who's a non-bird free agent, so they can only offer him you know, 120% bump. Uh, key extension eligible candidates. I won't get into the numbers. I just find it. I wrote it down here because I found it funny that they're extension eligible again. Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. It feels like they just signed extensions. Uh, so those are their key extension eligible candidates. Um, big, uh, their cap situation, they're above the second apron. They will only have the minimums to offer unless they go on an epic salary dumping spree. Uh, they, I, they technically don't have any notable, any notable trade exceptions, but they do have a 2.1 million one from the Reggie Jackson trade that expires on February 9th. Uh, that's not even like the minimum anymore for certain veterans. Aren't like veterans now like above three on the, in the new cap climate. I think but, yeah, it's up now. Uh, biggest needs. I have point guard slash ball handler. They could use another big, someone who spaces the floor at the five, even if they're going to play bigger or skew smaller. Where are you? What are your, what are your thoughts about this team heading into the off season? I mean, what about John wall? Is he available? Could they oh, wow. bring him in at the point? Um, man, I love that signing. I thought it made total sense last year. It did not. I was uh, for it. I was like, did they, I was like, I, I found it a little bit surprising. They needed to use their entire, mid-level but you know he, he was fresh man he'd barely played for like three years that was i bet you they would take him for the mid-level this year just because they don't have the mid-level and, and they might <laughs> want that back um we got to start with eric gordon uh because he kind of informs a lot of this so his gear his his 20.9 million guarantees uh on june 28th so like we're kind of already up against it we're not gonna it's not the type of thing you can wait till the next league year are you thinking you guarantee that and use him as a trade ship to bring back someone that you could get up? I don't have the numbers in front of me, but someone make up to 24 or 25. Is that roughly what you could expect with that? I, I, that's what I would do. I don't know if they're going to do that because, you know, we talk about Steve Bomber being willing to pay anything, but if you're, whether you're keeping Eric Gordon or turning him into someone who makes as much or a little bit more money, your luxury tax bill is going to be, I mean, like through the roof. I think right now they're if they bring back Eric Gordon and don't add or, and don't add anybody, they're looking at like a tax bill that's going to be like tax and sa salary that's going to be like in the five hundred million dollar range. I think like it's it's pretty absurd. Oh, that's with there's the cap pull for Mason Plumley in there, so it won't be that egregious. But we're talking about a team that's going to run you, you know, maybe in the four hundred million dollar range after factoring in the necessary taxes and the the player salary. But if you don't do that, if you let the guarantee date lapse or whatever, I just don't know how they build or they add to this roster. I guess you could always just you could trade. I mean, he's not your only salary, but like I, so I ask because I'm inclined. I would I would guarantee it. And then oh, I would just I would view too. him as a view him as a trade ship. And then use them. I mean, like maybe yeah. he, he can help you, too, still. Maybe so. Maybe so. If he were, if he were a little more of a point guard, you might really have your solution, but he just not since his early Clippers days, was there any real hope that that was the case? Um, I'm trying to think of like, so if you're retaining Eric Gordon, this is a lot of time to talk about Eric Gordon, but he is like low key kind of important. If you're retaining him as an expiring, you know, 20 was it 20.9 million dollar salary. Where are the team? So you want to trade him to a team that just wants to cut money or has a bad contract that they're happy to give back that has a couple years on it. So like the, oh, that, I wasn't even, I was even thinking like, do you use him and you're attaching stuff to him where you have, well, you trade a future first, you have the number 30. Like, did, is this a team that you've got 30 and 43 or 48 in this draft? I think you have um, 30 and what do they got? 48. 48. So, let's just say John Collins, not that that's what they need necessarily, but like if the principals involved are Eric Gordon and John Collins, the lake, the, the Clippers have to give up what to, to sweeten that because you are getting Atlanta below the tax, which they care about. I think um, they care. About it, it. Well, this is the other thing you got to, you got to trade him now, right? You can't wait till after the guarantee date. Cause you, what you want is the acquiring team is the ability to, to waive him or to, to let, to not pick up the guarantee, right? Like that's, that's the way this works. If you're a team that's acquiring him to just cut a bunch of money and maybe have like a pick attached or something like, is yeah. that, 
is is that scenario where you're Collins from Atlanta or like Lowry, you know, from Miami or something, something is, I think he probably makes too much actually, but something like that. Yeah, you have to include more money in there. Yeah. I mean, that's for sure. Um, I might even just, yeah. I, wouldn't his, doesn't his thing, if you're going to take back that amount of money though, wouldn't he have to be guaranteed? That's the thing. I can't, I can never I'm remember sure. the timing of that. You have to trade him basically as an expiring contract next season. I yeah. don't think it would work. It could work if that team has cap space because you can use his number, but um, so they need to guarantee his contract if they're going to move him. And, yeah. but John Collins is the perfect example in theory, because it's not just about, okay, you trim some salary in the short term, but you're also trimming a bunch of long-term salary because Eric, and look, maybe Eric Gordon takes a buyout that saves you some money off the top of that. Although I don't know why you want such a big dead cap number on your books. So I, my guess would be, you have to like sweeten regardless. Yeah. And so what would you, does Eric Gordon and number 30 get you John Collins at this point? Is that, I don't know. I mean, that's technically a first, you know, they, the Hawks <laughs> couldn't move him for anything. It, it's hard. I'm just spitballing. Cause I think Gordon is like an interesting piece. If you're looking for ways for the Clippers to do something, they could also trade Norm Powell. They could trade Robert Covington. They're, yeah. they're still like Marcus Morris is expiring as well. Yeah. There, there's ways to go. Um, but Gordon seems, I don't know. Maybe that's not fair. Do they have enough? Do they have enough? If this team is willing to move him, do they have enough assets to get Miles Turner? They have the expiring money that we assume the and look, they could send them a combo forward too, which the Pacers might be interested in. They have the number thirty pick. I don't know if you give. They have Terrence Mann. They have a few. They could give up a future first round pick. I'm not sure because I don't know how much expiring money appeals to the to a team like the Pacers because they're already their books are like looking pretty good going forward. I, if you had more draft capital, then I think you're probably having a, a more serious conversation, but um, I just don't know. Well, it's hard to know because maybe the Pacers want to, you know, be like playing or better status this year. And they're willing to do that. They're willing to take on some veterans. The expiring is like a nice bonus factor. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, what about Chris Paul? Like there's all this stuff. Like, could they like Powell and, Morris and Covington or Powell and Covington. Like, is there, is that like two pie in the sky? I mean, th I think that's a possibility too. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. I guess that would make sense for them. You want them to have a point guard. I think it's obviously makes a lot more sense if he was waived and you were picking him up at the minimum, but sure. Yeah. I, the fit with Kawhi and Paul George, I go back and forth because Chris Paul is still ball dominant. You don't mm -hmm. necessarily want that. And even when Russell Westbrook was on the court with those guys, there was some iffiness, but like Chris Paul is technically a better shooter. He shot like 50% like catch and shoot threes this year. He just didn't take many of them. And that fell off a cliff in the playoffs. I I'm also of the mind that at this point it's, well, can you count on both Kawhi and Paul George being available enough that you have to worry about the awkwardness of that fit? And the answer is no, no, you cannot. <laughs> if you don't have to give up any draft equity, I consider it, especially for Phoenix as a team. And we'll get to them. Like they clearly want to just break up Chris Paul and or Deandre Ayton into multiple contracts. So yeah, that's a, I didn't, I didn't think about them as a trade candidate for CP3, but that actually, if you're looking for someone to take on his full salary, I could see it. That's not yeah. a bad idea. Um, you mentioned Westbrook. Like, so they, they don't have bird rights. So the, basically they can offer him the, the I've seen different numbers, but 3.8 is the highest I've seen, um, yeah. which is not going to cut it probably compared to the, what he might get from who knows where else. That's just like so low. Um, they should do, should they want oh, him back at three, eight? Cause I yeah. think they, they should. Yeah. Oh, um, absolutely. What and are the odds they get him back? I, I don't know because if he signs, resigns with them, I know he wanted to be in LA still after yeah. leaving the Lakers, but you would have to think it would be a Batum Jackson situation where there was the wink, wink agreement of, we're going to just resign you to a bigger deal with early bird rights next year. And that would give me like yeah. a little bit of, of pause. If I'm a Clippers fan, at least, but he was good for them. And just like, he gave them some rim pressure. The turnovers remained out of control. Sometimes he was hitting his threes. He played really well defensively in the playoffs, but I would, I would like to say that not every game is going to be against Kevin Durant to where he has that sort of revenge juice flowing, but you yeah. should have for what you can pay him. You should absolutely want him back just for the innings that he can eat up for you when Kawhi and or Paul George are out of the lineup. I did a, I filed today a piece on landing spots that top free agents should avoid. And for Westbrook, it's everywhere, but the Clippers just because like that, like he's been on five teams in five years 
and everyone has soured on him more or less. And this is the only place you've been in a half a decade where they're like, we, we are into the Russell Westbrook experience. Let's have more of this. Like, and you're in LA. He should, right. I, I mean, you don't want to count the guy's money, but he's made plenty of it. I think like it makes sense for him because he's going to have a role and it seems like the team actually values what he does, which like literally anywhere else that may not be the case. And this is all assumes he plays like he did for most of his stretch there, which is a big if like, you know, that's probably probably naive to think that he's going to, you know, defend and move the ball as well as he did. But still, he should want to be there. Is there I don't want to spend too much time on this, but before we get into minimum targets, is there any chance whatsoever that the Clippers go in the complete opposite direction that everyone's thinking? And maybe there's some selling magic going on here the answer is no right i don't think so they yeah. don't they have a new arena to open yeah not? i think that's the in 2024 it's you yeah. want Kawhi and Paul, you want the team to be good at right. least for that and so anyone who's like fantasizing about paul george and Kawhi trades i can't even i can't even fathom what i would give up for Kawhi leonard at this point so it could be so hard to evaluate yeah. I, I uh, are know. there any minimum guys that stand out to you for this team i have a couple if you want me to to start it off yeah go ahead i got a couple too but they're very minimal i, I don't know this is ambitious some of these are ambitious i have dennis schroeder i feel like he might have played his way out of minimum territory uh ditto for bismarck biombo if you wanted to kind of fortify the front court my guess is that they're kind of just looking at a you know a bottom of the barrel that is like or closer to the bottom of the barrel than those guys so could you go you know you're looking for size like an Alex Len, or if you want size, that gives you floor spacing. Do you are you the team that tries to you know roll the dice again on Myers Leonard? Uh, looking at like the point guard situation is just I don't know if you can't get Russ back. Do you assuming his team option gets declined? Do you take a look at Derrick Rose? What is Goran Dragic gonna get this off season? I would assume he would still kind of be in minimum territory. Uh, do you try and you know rejuvenate Kemba Walker's knees? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even think about him you know it's bad when you scroll down the list of free agent point guards and you're like oh reggie jackson that's not bad like oh wait <laughs> <laughs> wait a second that is bad and that's why he's not there anymore i was convinced you know, for a moment by the way when i had kemba's name circled i'm like wait did he already play for the clippers <laughs> <laughs> i think um like Corey joseph you know, okay. are we are we in a ty jerome something he can score a what? little bit like i mean we're talking guys that were on two ways uh, if we haven't mentioned DJ Augustine yet, is it time for a DJ Augustine <laughs> third renaissance? <laughs> no, I don't know. I think point guard has to be it. Um, I just like they've run through so many. It's like we're, we're going back to the Patrick Beverly. Well, he's probably getting more than the minimum anyway. Um, Javon yeah. Carter, if he declines his player option, he's getting more than the minimum. For sure, getting more than the minimum. Yeah, yeah you're... Junior might be getting more than the minimum too. That's not something they can afford anymore either after the season he just had. I agree. Yeah, I mean, there's, I don't know where you go. Howell Neto, like that's a third stringer that you're going to play it as a starter, or I guess behind Russ. I don't know if, if we're assuming Russ is back. I guess that's probably more palatable. But yeah, Derek Rose is interesting. Um, like you said, but it's uh, it, we're we're scraping the barrel here. For we started would, out with the two like most capped out, taxed out teams that just can't sign anybody. I would say I think there's probably a greater than sixty percent chance that they end up trading a first round pick attached to some salary to make an immediate upgrade. Yeah, before the season starts, I think. Well, can they do anything immediate? I'm gonna put you on the spot. Like that can get them back their mini mid level or are they just way too far gone for that <laughs> like not even close right. right so let's so if we let's assume that part of that then would involve they'll get rid of eric gordon uh my other yeah i'm on the wrong team i'm like oh wait they no, can they, they could get there if well i guess gordon's is not so i have them at with, 183 million and without that gordon is without or gordon plumley. yeah without so gordon no plumley and so you're already over so yeah you could dump to open yeah. up the you you could dump but i just that's a lot if so to lose mason Plumley, eric gordon and then player x yeah to, who is the mini mid-level getting you that it's is that all to keep russ right at that point? because then because you're talking it's got to be batum or covington you wouldn't do it with, for zubats Mar i'm trying to do it for marcus morris but i don't know like what the but, but that's then just is, a lot of you is your to, mini mid-level worth more no, a three Gordon, like not even Basically, close. Yeah, no. Yeah. So I don't I don't think they would do that.